G'day viewers, welcome to another video from Alex Does DIY. My name is Alex. I'll come out and I'll face with this. Oh, look at that. Another camping video today. The weather's uh, really turned it on for us, so I thought, oh, what better thing to do when it's peeing down rain? Go and camp in a rainforest. That makes sense. Not really walking far today, only a few k's. Certainly nothing like the um, last trip. And once again, thanks to those who watched the previous video, the Barrington Tops camp. If you haven't seen that, I'll put the put the link up here or something. But yeah, thanks to those that have watched and followed along and commented. Really appreciate it as always. Weather forecast for today is going to be interesting. It's been raining for a couple of days here. The forecast more to come. There's actually been a weather warning. A bit of a system moving up the coast. Apparently going to bring some high winds and heavy rains dump on it. It's going to be fun and a bit of a challenge. Always up for a challenge. Yeah, obviously fire is going to be the big, the big question. Beautiful spot here. This is part of the Great North Walk in New South Wales. Um, this section is part of the section that starts at Summersby Store and then uh, goes north through Palm Grove and continues on. Um, I've got onto the, the path here at, at Palm Grove and we're walking to Stringy Bark Rest Area, which is on the path. And at that point, the plan at this stage, follow the creek, which is a Rimba Creek, follow that north for however long until I can hopefully find a place to make camp. Um, I'm not sleeping under the tarp this time. Uh, one of the um, characteristics of this place, apart from its obvious beauty, is its absolute infestation with leeches. So I'm not overly keen on sleeping on the ground under a tarp, so I brought the hammock this time, as well as the tarp, for a bit of, a bit of cover from the rain. So yeah, we'll be hammocking. Which is good, I enjoy being in the hammock. I haven't been in the hammock for a well, good 18 months, I think. So that's the plan for today and tomorrow. It's still early. It's only about, um, it's probably about 9.30. So this is, as the uh, rain starts for the first time on the trip, this is Stringy Park Point Rest Area. I always forget the point. It's Stringy Park, Stringy, <coughs> Stringy Park Point Rest Area. So we've come from this way. And uh, you can obviously see people have stopped here for a camp, bit of a fire pit, some nice seats and everything. So if you're on the Great North Walk, you go across the bridge and continue that way. My plan's at this stage uh, to find a way to follow the creek. So if we go up onto the bridge here, I want to see if there's a way that I can follow the creek that way, north, and see if I can't find somewhere to set up camp for the night. Something I'm going to need to be mindful of, I think, when it comes to choosing a place to stop for the night is just the terrain and my proximity to the creek itself. As I said earlier, there's forecast weather warnings for torrential rain and winds today. And this is obviously a natural catchment or part of a larger catchment area, which is why the creek is here. And while the creek currently looks nice and calm and sedate, I mean, you've just got to look around, you can see you know, debris here 
that's been brought by previous high water levels not that long ago I would say you can see the banks go quite high on that side and quite high on that side as well so I'll be looking to places up high like that to choose a place to stay for the night so I decided to uh, try and see if I could get my way out of that creek the sides were getting steeper and I couldn't see much of an end coming up just yet I thought I'd rather get out of there and uh, had a harm's way because obviously just because it's not raining here doesn't mean that it's not raining further up in the catchment so I've kind of found what looked like a bit of an animal trail I'm trying to push my way through up that way somehow and the creek the creek's down there you can still hear it but it's almost uh, it's almost out of sight off a drop off there I'm gonna try and continue to push my way uphill see so how we go I can always backtrack if I have to but I'd rather not oh, I found a patch of sky <laughs> that's hard going up that embankment come across a couple of times it's so thick with vines but no way out of where I am. I'll show you. That's what I'm faced with. That's where I come from. Up through there. And all around. It's just... Just thick impenetrable stuff. You can see the trees there. Those trees over there on the other side of the, the creek. So I have to make a decision whether I want to continue on this path or not. Like, it's ridiculously thick. His idea was this off-track crap. How is it everyone else on YouTube goes off-track camping? I swear to God, Scotty's gone walkabouts. Did you see his last video? You would think he was camping in Sydney Botanical Gardens. It was that clear and manicured and picturesque and beautiful. Nice country stroll. I come out and I'm faced with this shit. Surely that's worth a thumbs up and a subscribe. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to have to make a decision. Do I keep hacking through there? Or do I backtrack down to the down to the creek to find another spot out? I think that's going to have to be the go because this is just ridiculous. Alright, I made it back down to the creek. That was a mission. On the other side of the embankment, it's... Uh, Deeper, and once you get up to this first ridge, I think it's going to be even thicker. So I'm going further up the creek. Again, thick, thick vines. So I'm going to backtrack back down the creek a bit and see if I can find an easier, an easier path in. I don't want to get too far away from the creek though, because it's my source of water, obviously. Too bad, a little bit yellow from the tannins. Bottle's full, belly's full of water. Rain's starting to come down. So um, there's there's the bridge just there. And just with the just with the few minutes of rain, I can already see start to see a noticeable difference in the. Uh, flow of the creek so I'm thinking it's a good time to get out of this area try and find somewhere again I'm going to follow the path further north maybe there's somewhere just off the track where I can set up camp all right so funny story I've just crossed the bridge over this way so I'm coming up the creek so from coming up that's where we've just come from way up there back to the rest area and across the bridge and it's uh, kind of fortunate that I did because what I didn't notice at the time when we were here before we come over here the creek splits here and goes that way and that's the creek that I wanted to follow all along <laughs> so there you go you've got to be grateful for the small things eh? when you think you're losing you just might be winning. I'm heading up this way now. Try and find a spot that's still within reach of the creek. <laughs> okay, still searching. I've decided to continue along the path and it comes to a uh, 
crossing across the creek. It's like it's going to be uh, boots wet, feet wet. settled on a spot it's fairly clear here it's about the clearest spot that I've um, come across um, I can do the hammock I think between uh, this tree here and this tree here and then I've got a couple of tarps I can set up and uh, figure out what I'm gonna do about fire <laughs> I don't know what time it is, I don't think it's that late. I don't think it'll be even midday yet. Judging by the sun, I'd say it's probably about 10.30. Actually, let's have a look and see how good I am. Oh, there you go. That shows you how much I need to watch. 11.57. I was only out by an hour and a half. So it is winter. So this is the hammock, it's a Hennessy Explorer, is it? Deluxe Explorer ASIM. I'll give you a look at uh, what we got. So, so at the top, strung up as, between the trees as expected, and uh, I think I have no problems being uh, protected from the rain there. The tarp I've got kind of set up down here, and I've got the smaller tarp down as a as a ground sheet, so it's going to keep me gear dry. I can uh, sit down there tonight on the ground and relax. Um, the other thing is the wind is coming from like from this <laughs> it's blowing that way so that's going to give me act as a bit of a windbreak as well so that's the setup um i've had little spots of rain of uh sunshine coming through on blue sky though it's all gone now time is 1 30. so yeah that took way longer than expected so um next step is to try and figure out fire because I, uh, I'd like to warm up and dry off. I'm a bit wet and a bit cold, and it's only going to get worse or colder and wetter. I'm starting to get some firewood building up slowly. Obviously, everything's really, really wet. I've got some stuff under cover here. Twigs slowly starting to get bigger and bigger. This is where I'm going to have my fire here, which is not too far from. I'll feel the heat in there from the fire. I'm going to need to build some sort of coverage for it but everything's obviously really wet but it's the twigs that are going to get the fire going I'll just show you the sort of stuff I'm looking for with firewood it's like I said everything is so so wet like it's all like this it's just everything everything is just mush so but there's a few choice pieces if you kind of look for it especially stuff that's off the ground i'll give you an example like this stuff here so you can see this stuff here it's wet but i've just cut that and it's really solid it's not rotten at all so it's only really wet bark inside that's pretty good and it's solid wood all the way back there so i think i'll probably end up processing down all that and uh yeah, it's getting dark pretty quick so I'm trying to get a bit of a hurry on it's 2 30 but it's obviously pretty dark it's just starting to get a little bit of rain so I thought I'd take a five minute breather um, just under the cover here you see I've got a bunch of 
little sticks because like I said that's what's really going to get us going. I've got my tripod constructed there and I've chucked a, this bark on top there just to give it a little bit of rain cover. What I'll do is, because I've got all the big stuff over there that I haven't cut up yet, I'll, um, as I cut up the big stuff, I'll lay it across the back or stand it up at the back against that uh, the tripod and um, that'll help dry out the bigger wood as well while the fire's going and give it a bit of rain protection and uh, act as a heat reflector. All right, so a slight break in the rain, so it's time to put plan A into practice. See how we go. So once again, we've just got the raised bed on some pretty wet and punky sort of wood. This is all just a pile under here of sticks and twigs ready to slowly bring over a firelight of flame, which is gonna be sitting on some bark. This bark's not totally wet actually. Um, the idea being that sticks are going to dry fairly fast in the flame and you get a pretty good flame from these. I think I'll get two out. Which is, uh, these are just the uh, cot um, cotton makeup removal pads that have been soaked in wax and they get a, a pretty, pretty good flame for a few minutes so the idea is that the flame will dry the twigs out and then the twigs will start to burn. Same with this bark on top. I've got another pile of twigs just to the right there ready to go on. And some slightly larger stuff, which again is, this is really wet. It's dry inside, it's only the bark. Like, see how it's, um, it's dry inside. So hopefully we do all right. So let's go. smother it. Plenty of air. I'm starting to see some flame come up through the top there. So. so fire's cranking along there you go look at it not a problem first go no issue in the rain in the rainforest crappy wood we can still get a fire going you know, the uh the rain cover pieces are catch occasionally catch on light so i have to snuff those out but um i've got some bigger pieces in there now there's some bigger pieces over here that are cut i've got some bigger pieces here that are cut some other pieces that are leaning up here and drying out and i've got this big lump of a bit in here which will burn tonight and um, a couple of uh, longer pieces over there so I did uh, I did just have a bit of an incident before and I'm, I'm spewing I didn't get it on camera because it would have been funny but I, I had a bit of an incident with my saw so I've been going between the wood pile and the fire and cutting a bit of wood going and putting it in the fire cutting the wood put in the fire or put it under the tarp there backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and uh, I stopped for a breather and then when I went back to cut the wood, instead of having the saw in my hand, I had a bit of wood. I'm thinking, where the bloody hell's my saw? So I've gone looking around the place, looking on the dirt, looking in the, under the tarp, looking in the wood pile, and of course, being the colour it is, it blends in with the background, and I'm starting to freak out. And then I, I realised what I've done. I've cut a bit of wood, had the saw in one hand, wood in the other hand, gone to the fire to put the wood in the fire, instead of putting the wood in the fire, I put my saw in the fire <laughs> and it's just lucky I caught it in time and that I had gloves on and I could rip it out but uh, the handle was well alight at the time it was the handle was actually in the fire and the blade was sticking out I pulled it out and it was well alight you can see it's all it's all melted and uh, it no longer folds in half so it's a it's a one-piece saw now but it still works fortunately I know I've been saying I wanted to upgrade to a silky gomboy or something similar, but I didn't want to get rid of the Barco, the Barco Laplander, she's been a good little sort. So, 
it would have been funny to see on footage so I'm really spilled I didn't catch it um, anyway so yeah fires cranking here we go me, me roofs on fire again I might have to actually get rid of these I think I can always put them on again later if it starts to rain. Or once it dies down, so it's not an issue. They're nice and crispy now, and there's plenty of supply. This big tree over here, it's got a ton of it, and it's all wet, so. Anyway, I'm gonna start uh, slowing down a bit now. I think um, I've earned a bit of a break, and I go and top up my water bottle, check out the scenery. It's still pretty early. I think it's only about 3, 3.30 or something, so. But I need these, uh, this fire di to die down to some coals, which is really good. I'm 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 trying something new today with the with the uh, with the food compared to the previous two videos. So I'm actually going to cook today. Well, I cooked on the first one, but something a bit more adventurous. I hope it works. <laughs> It'll taste good if it does. <laughs> Okay, so if you watched my last video on uh, the camp up at Barrington Tops, I ate the dehydrated meals. Um, since having those, I've been doing a little bit of research. Turns out I, I missed, missed out a crucial step in their preparation. Um, so I, th I think it's probably a step that a lot of people probably do miss out on. It's not quite on the instruction. So normally what you do is open up the packet, pour in boiling water and, and eat it but uh, like I said I've done some research and it turns out there's a better way so once again you've, you've got to rip the lid off like so this is spaghetti bolognese that fire is so hot there we go now normally what you do at this point is you pour your hot water in there but there's one crucial step before that that I forgot to follow what you actually do rather than adding the water in there what you do you just you tip it on the fire like that you just tip the ingredients on the fire. Um, the reason why you do that, it's quite a vital step because that will actually prevent that food from getting in your stomach and also prevent it from getting in the stomach of any native animals. And that's probably a pretty important thing. All right, so let's start making some real food. So this is a bit of an, an experiment. So what I want to do, I've just got the old Billy can, she's seen better days, it's just a cheap one, nothing fancy, um, with the lid obviously, and I've just got one of these dishes, these of these sort of imitation military issue tin dish things, they normally come in a pair, this is a small one and I've taken the handle off. Um, that fits ideally inside there and will allow the lid to go on, so I'm thinking doing that if we put that in the fire that effectively makes it a uh, an oven so I'm gonna try and roast something so I'm pretty keen on this because I don't actually have an oven at home I haven't had an oven roasted meal for a long time so let's have a look what we got okay so we need which is leaked yeah I've just got some uh, chopped up already just some potatoes and carrot and some uh, a little bit of uh, capsicum with some some garlic and salt and pepper. There we go. Then on top of that, I've got a pork roast. Check that out. Just pre-prepared from the shop. Already seasoned. Now obviously I'm hoping that that's gonna fit <laughs> inside that tin. Let's see how we go. Oh look at that. Made to fit. Put the lid on. 
There we go. She is good to go. We've also got some um, some onion um, and a little fry pan there. And I thought I'd um, I'll make some onion gravy or something, but I've, and this is just some tawny pork to go in the gravy. But it's kind of kind of looking. <laughs> kind of looking good better to drink than to uh, put in in gravy at the moment so this, I reckon this is either gonna be really really good or total disaster <laughs> so clearly you gotta have your have your campfire set to 350 degrees Celsius for the first 20 minutes and turn it down to 180 for every 500 grams of meat I'm not putting any gloves on, hang on. Well, that probably for a half an hour, 45 minutes, and um, pull her out and check it out. It's already sizzling. I think I might have spilled a bit though. Alright, I hope you can. Oh, smoke. I hope you can see me. Um, all right, so it's time to check the uh, check the roast dinner, see how that's going. I think it's been in there maybe somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour. Uh, it's still sizzling on the way. Um, I hope it's ready now because um, I, I still want to make the onion gravy in. There's I've down to about half a cup of. Bleh tawny port so if uh, if it's not ready I think uh, we'll be skipping the gravy <laughs> let's check it out oh it's not burnt at crisp I don't think oh Oh, look at that. She's a bit crispy at the back. And it uh, looks like the potatoes on the bottom or the veggies on the bottom are pretty black. But uh, I'm calling that done. Oh, it's even got like, almost like crackling. Yum. some self-raising flour with a bit of butter in it some salt and pepper that I brought in to um, make it damper in the morning the best meal I've probably eaten in weeks and to think it was cooked in a rainforest Mm. 
significant more. That pork is so tender. And how about that, eh? Roast pork. <laughs> Roast pork dinner in the rainforest, cooked in the rain. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to enjoy this. I won't make you watch me eat. And, um, and my last little bit of pork. This is too good. All right, that's dinner eating. I know it's probably one of the better things I've ever cooked out camp, and I was thinking it's one of the better things I've ever cooked ever. That was so good. Love it when a plan comes together. Dinner's done, I've cleaned up. Um, it's still only early. I think it's probably only about six-ish, 6.30. I wouldn't say it's more than about 6.30, maybe seven. Just starting to rain a little bit. I just chucked a few more logs on the fire and chucked some more of that uh, bark over the top because of the rain. And um, I'm just going to chill out and relax now. That's me done for the evening. I'm going to finish that port. I may choose to have a hot chockey later. But oh, I'm so full after that feed. Man, what a feed. Sorry if it looks like I've been bawling my eyes out, just having blasts of smoke in my face. Oh, had an alright night last night. Rained on and off all the way through the night. I'm too cold actually, it was pretty good. Got some uh, decent blocks of sleep, which is alright. Um, hammock was reasonably comfortable. I'm almost thinking though that. Now being able to make a, a fairly good comparison, I could, I'd probably say that I'm edging towards preferring sleeping on the ground um, on the Nemo um, sleep pad, inflatable sleep pad, rather than in the in the hammock. I think so. It's just it's just I find it difficult. I'm, biggest problem for me is that I normally sleep on my stomach, so they're not great for stomach sleepers because it, even with that one with the, the ASIM design where you, you're meant to go diagonally and you can never really go properly go diagonally and you still end up with a bit of a dip. I was thinking last night it surprises me that someone hasn't come up with an inflatable sleeping pad just for hammocks that has a curve underneath, so flat on top with a curve underneath so that you inflate it and put it in your hammock and you end up with a flat bed. Surely that makes sense. Someone go and make that. I would buy that. I'm gonna make some breakfast. Um, had me coffee, so another bit of an experiment. So just dump some bacon there. I'm gonna try and make some bacon, bacon cheese and chive damper for brekkie, and uh, utilise the, the same Billy tin oven method that we did 
did with the uh, roast pork last night, which I'm still blown away with how good that roast dinner was last night. It was awesome. Conditions today so far, a little bit chilly, but not too cold. I don't know what the temperature is. Poking up through the trees there, I can see. It's a blue sky, plenty of cloud, but yeah, blue sky up there today. So hopefully the rain will stay away long enough for me to um, cook this up and have a feed and then pack my gear up and, and get out of here. But I'm not in any hurry. It's only early, I think it's probably about eight o'clock, seven o'clock, 7.30, yeah, somewhere in there. So I'll, um, I'll crack on with this uh, damper and see how we go. got self-raising flour and butter and uh, a little bit of salt. Jeez. Oh, I picked the bones out of that one. Oh, I think I put too much water in. Oh, I finally lost my band-aid. Go check that out. I'll make you hungry. Yeah, that looks alright, eh? Set up in the gas mark five. Come back in half an hour or 20 minutes or something, see what that looks like. All right, it's been about 40 minutes. Although it wouldn't be, Alex does DIY if the bread doesn't come out burnt, I think. Oh. Oh. Let's have a look. Have a go at that. <laughs> oh man, it smells good. Here we go at that, eh? Oh, it's hot. It's hot, 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 hot. Oh god, that smells yum. Could I be two for two on the cooking on this trip? Uncharacteristically, I haven't brought any butter. Normally I don't leave home without it, but um, anyway, let's see what this is like. It's very hot. Oh. Mmm. Mm. Maybe could have done with another five or ten minutes. Oh, that's divine. All right, well, I'm gonna kick back in the hammock for a while. Enjoy some of this uh, cheese, bacon and chive damper. And then um, I'll start uh, packing up camp, I think. Oh, so good. As predicted, once the band-aid come off my finger, I've very quickly knocked the top off it. It's probably the best thing for it, left some of that pus out. You could look at it two ways, I suppose. You could look at it as, it's probably not the most responsible thing to do to come out in the bush while you've got an infection, something like that. Where obviously there's plenty of organisms and bacteria and stuff out here that could make things worse. And the next video you see could be Alex does DIY 
finger amputation or finger prosthetic perhaps but the way I look at it in this day and age when you can currently go to your local supermarket and pick up a, a virus that could potentially kill you I'd rather come out here I think Right, there we go, camp packed up, fire's all been put out and covered over and spread and chucked around. So returning the place, returning the place back to the way we found it. You wouldn't even know that anyone stayed here last night, that's the way to be, eh? Leave no trace. All right, what an amazing, awesome time I've had. That was so good. So what have I learnt on this latest episode of Man with middle age crisis seeks adventure. Um, all right, let's think. Uh, my dry as a bone jacket uh, keeps me about as dry as a sea sponge, so um, it needs to be reproofed. So that'll that'll be my next job on the list. Um, don't chuck your saw in the fire. That's good advice. Um, Maybe have a little bit more confidence in myself in terms of fire starting ability, you know. I come in here yesterday, everything is wet, it was raining, and yet I managed to get a fire going first go. Um, cooking, what a win that was, that roast pot last night. That was seriously the best meal I've eaten in a while. Um, yeah, it just had a great, great time. So, thanks for watching. I really, really do appreciate you coming to the channel. Please give us a thumbs up if you like the content. Um, thank you for watching all the way through to the end. Um, please subscribe if you're not already subscribed and feel free to share. I'd love to hear your comments. Um, I know so far only about 10 people are watching these videos, but um, you know, I, I, I don't know, do you find this entertaining? <laughs> um, I hope so, I hope you do. Anyway, so I'll sign off now. I'll, thanks again. Cheers.